Yeah. Yeah. There, and then the center stood yeah. where you are. That would be a good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Sorry. 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 Has already been analyzed, especially by the paper, by the first paper by the Finnish guys. We are very similar mm -hmm. perspectives. The paper is based. I wrote the paper with Cristina Morini, and uh, uh, the paper is about uh, uh, research uh, activities that last uh, since uh, some years about the transformation of labor market in uh, industrialized countries, especially in Western countries. That is not worldwide. And uh, about uh, the new role played by precarity in this context, and uh, with, uh, as a consequence of the changes, structural change in the process of accumulation and valorization. We call it, uh, according to the neo workerism approach, uh, biocapitalism, cognitive biocapitalism. I don't want to stress about this point. Uh, maybe that if you want to have more details in the discussion, but I don't think that will be enough time to do that. So, uh, we, we, we face uh, uh, some very, uh, in the last two centuries of uh, capitalism, capitalist activity, some very structural exchange. In the, la in the very, very briefly, from the last uh, 30 years, uh, the uh, terrorist for this organization of labor entered in crisis and was uh, substitute by new forms of uh, uh, process of valorization that is based on, especially on knowledge and relational uh, activity. So that means that uh, the new forms of organization of labor is based with a new type of dialectics that is about uh, the role played by communication, especially in, on technological aspect as you underlined before, that is information technology, information society, or something like that, or communication information technology, uh, that needs cooperation, that means a process of accumulation of time of the productive capacity, and uh, the, new, the hierarchical structure of this new labor organization is based not on a, a sort of uh, a disciplines, uh, in faculty and sense, uh, that was uh, very, very easy to see in the factories, for instance, on assembly line, but uh, a, s a sort of social concept, control in Deleuzean sense, if we refer to Foucault to Deleuze. That is a sort of self-repression, self-control, the construction of imaginaries uh, and, and so on. And uh, the result, the, the, the first point I want to stress is that the result of this transformation is that precarious uh, activity it has become the structural way of the capital labor ratio, as, as, you, as you already said before. Eh? Uh, the first movement against precarity in Italian, that has links to the Mayday process, Euro Mayday process, and so on, just uh, about uh, 10 years ago, uh, argued that uh, precarity has three main attributes. The first one is that it's not only a labor precarity, but it's a life precarity, as it stands. So because it's to do with the whole life of the people. That is the result of this labor transformation, because it's very difficult now nowadays to make a, a certain, a strict division between labor time and non-labor time. And the second element is a structural, because of the, the way in which uh, uh, the new forms of labor activity are uh, implemented in a uh, in cognitive by capitalism is based on the individualization of labor relations and the new all the cognitive uh, uh, activities uh, life activities are put to work and ends are put to value that is uh, the new forms of uh, val uh, valorization and uh, this kind of uh, structure is pervasive all along all the uh, labor contracts and um, and it's something that is a new source of value, so that is why it's, we consider it structural. And then it's generalized because independent on the different labor condition of the different labor contracts, all the people feel themselves from a psychological point of view, especially more than from an effective point of view, 
as precarious. Even the stable workers uh, in, 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 in determined time employees and so on. All the situation of restructuring process in Europe and the crisis nowadays in the last three, four years, I think that has demonstrated this kind of very, very, very much. All the blue collars uh, that has a stable work, no perfect, and the perfect no, they perfectly know that this kind of condition can stop from one day to another. Starting from this point, uh, we, and, and the second point is that this kind of uh, um, precarious activity is based especially on two uh, properties. It is communitiveness and relationality. If we, I am an economist, unfortunately, but and, uh, and uh, if we want to translate these two concepts, sociological concepts in a, from an economic point of view, we say that new types of uh, uh, scale economies that are dominant in uh, producing uh, gains in productivity in uh, production are learning economies that comes from communitiveness, especially as uh, far as knowledge is concerned. Because a community has to do with knowledge, with skills, with uh, apprenticeship, and so on. And uh, network economies has to do with relation, relation the capacity to, to improve knowledge and to diffuse knowledge. And of course, all these kind of processes are bound, bound and constrained by a lot of uh, attempts, very successful till now, to expropriate this kind of uh, knowledge uh, production, knowledge. knowledge value and the capacity to control and to monitor, to monitor how uh, knowledge is diffused, especially through intellectual property rights and so on. Of course, all the third property is coordination. That means that the, the organization of production, the organization of activity is on horizontal level, no more on vertical, hierarchical, discipline structure. Uh, the, the, starting from this premise, now we, uh, the third, the, the, the third and the fourth point, then I stop it. And um, the third point is that uh, uh, we tried, that is uh, the focus of our research agenda, we tried to analyze uh, um, using data from uh, the Italian labor market, if it's possible, a very, at the moment, a very rough way, at a macro level, not a micro level, at a macro level, is it possible to see some specific uh, novelties <laughs> that are able to capture this kind of transformation labor. We have to face from a labor economics point of view a lack of uh, uh, statistical uh, um, indicators, we have to say, because normally the statistics on labor, on labor market are based on the analysis of three main indicators. It is the rate of employment, the rate of unemployment, and the rate of activity. So the labor, the labor force are divided into three categories. Employed, unemployed, and inactive, and so that is able to, to give a to give a look to the situation in the labor market. Now, uh, <coughs> I, um, what is the result of this kind of transformation? That I think that this three this three repart repart repartition is right. Yeah, partition. Repartition, partition, partition, partition is not uh, more able to explain the dynamics of the labor market uh, situation. Especially because the segment of inactive is now is different from uh, respect, uh, it play a different role as in the past. Especially because inside the inactive, that normally are considered labor force that have no need to work, hmm? there is a lot of people, an increasing share of people that will to work and need to work, but uh, these people are not seeking a job. So uh, are not seeking, they do not achieve a job and because of the statistical uh, framework, normally these people is uh, insert in the inactive segment. But they are not really inactive. Um, then there is another category that is uh, important to, to highlight. The people that uh, who seek work but are not readily available at the moment because of the flexibility of life, we can say, eh? that is not strict uh, divided in uh, strict periods and so on. Uh, education, labor activity, retirement, and so on. There is a, a mixture of this uh, 
in this situation. And then there is uh, what is normally called, what is a statistical call the precariat. That is underemployed part-time temporary workers because the statistic, on my, on my opinion, says that the number of precaria is normally less than, uh, is underestimated. Okay, if we look at the Italian data, don't, don't, I'm sorry that they are in Italian because I didn't have time to rewrite in English, but here are the employed, unemployed, and inactive. So if we look, we can have the rate of unemployed, that for instance, uh, starting from this data is about, uh, uh, nowadays the last statistic in June is about 10% of the labor force. Then they write the, here are 22, 23 million of people. Here are almost 21 million people of inactive. You know that in Italy, in the Mediterranean countries, there is a problem that the rate of inactivity is higher than the European average, and there is all the strategies of European community for occupability and so on and so on and so on. And, but if we look, starting from this classical repartition, a new type of repartition that in Italy now is available, available since uh, November 2011, 2011, since uh, just one year. We have that uh, the, we can have a sort of potential active people, a potential active people, that in Italy is, uh, that is a peculiarity of the Italian, Italian market, is about uh, almost 3 million people. More than unemployed, more than unemployed people, there are two million and one hundred. So we can make a, in the